HP tuners is synonymous with reflashing factory ECUs. So at SEMA here, they've just bucked the trend a little bit with their new core standalone ECU. I'm here with Justin from HP tuners to find out a little bit more about this product. I guess the first question is for a company that's made their living reflashing factory ECUs, why completely 180 degree reverse direction and go with the standalone at this point? Sure, right. So uh, as you said, we've made a living reflashing factory ECUs, um, but at some point that customer is gonna outgrow that factory ECU. They're gonna want features and benefits uh, of their car, their build, uh, their hobby that goes beyond a factory ECU. Uh, and up until we release Core, uh, that customer would go to a different platform or a competitor. Uh, so with Core, having us uh, do a standalone and have other options and features and strategies allows us to retain that customer and, and move them from one HP product to another HP product. That sort of begs the question, one that constantly comes up from the reflashing world is at what point should I be going to a standalone? And I think the longer I've been in the industry, the harder that question becomes to answer. It's, it's really not black and white because you know, there's people making 1500 wheel horsepower on a stock ECU, there's people adding forced induction, nitrous, you know, the sky kind of is the limit. But just because you can, in my opinion, doesn't always necessarily mean that that's the best solution. From your perspective, what are the considerations when someone should be considering maybe the move away from a factory ECU? Sure, yeah, no, I, uh, I have the same sentiment, right? Uh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Uh, a lot of times when uh, builders or install installation shops push a customer to a factory ECU, uh, generally they don't know how to tune a factory ECU, right? So it scares them, so they move into a, a more simple, uh, more easy, more tuning by numbers kind of standalone. It's funny you say that. I, I totally agree. And I was in that situation many, many years ago where I had a, a really good background on tuning standalone. So I knew them inside and out. I hadn't done almost anything with reflashing factory ECUs. So you're scared of what you don't know. The process of tuning them is different. The tables look different. The operating principle of the factory ECU is very different to a standalone. So I think that does put a lot of tuners off. But if we sort of look at the, the opposite side of that, particularly for a, a basic bolt-on, maybe uh, an air filter intake, headers and exhaust, that style of tune, you know, if you're tuning a standalone, you're tuning everything from scratch. Every single table, every cell needs to be filled in. By default, that is a time-consuming process. Uh, on the other hand, if you're tuning from a factory ECU with a base calibration or a stock calibration, you, know, you might only need to be adjusting a handful of, of parameters, maybe some of the wide open throttle operating areas, so the tuning can be a lot quicker. So is it worth these standalone tuners putting in the effort to learn reflashing? Uh, I mean, in my opinion, I think it is because um, you're going to have different kind of customers, right? You're going to have customers that want to retain factory options, retain the factory ECU, all that kind of stuff. Uh, in my opinion, the transition from a factory ECU to a standalone ECU comes down to features and benefits, right? Do you, does your factory ECU do boost control? No. Standalone. Does it do traction control? No. Standalone. So all those features that a factory ECU will not do to standalone will do. I think that's when you decide if and when you want to jump from a factory ECU calibration to a standalone to get those extra features and benefits. So that's all sounding not necessarily purely down to motorsport, but if you're building something up for a motorsport application that by default then would lend itself maybe to make more sense going standalone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and again, to be clear, we're not saying you can't, but under those conditions, you're going to get benefits of maybe launch control, traction control, sure. and of course you already mentioned boost control as well. Sure, yeah, and, and anymore it's more so uh, a question of, of added features and less so of, of horsepower, right? I mean, you said there's a lot of guys making 15, 16, 1700 horsepower on a stock ECU and they don't need all the extra features and they're on stock ECU. Um, but if they, they want a traction control or they want a boost control or they want to boost by time or boost by speed or boost by gear, some sort of advanced um, system like that, then yeah, they'll go to a standalone. So I think it's all comes down to, to what you need the vehicle for, what you're building it for, what it's going to do, uh, and, and if you need the extra, the features of the standalone or not. As uh, cars and engines have become more complicated, we're seeing the factory ECUs also become more complicated with some of their tuning strategies. And you know, sometimes to the detriment of the aftermarket, uh, I'll use late model Ford ECUs for an example. They're, they're quite complex with their mapped points, and I know even uh, a, a lot of very skilled tuners have, have really struggled 
transitioning to that platform. Uh, where I'm going with this is when you're looking at building a standalone ECU, you've got complete flexibility in how you deal with engine operation. How do you walk that tightrope between offering complex features that give the ultimate maybe in performance and drivability uh, versus maybe something a bit more dumbed down that 90% of tuners can get their head around and understand. Sure. Yeah, and I think a lot of that revolves around uh, a presentation. You want to give a, a simple easy to work, easy manipulate feeling for the guys that are beginners. So like, you know, we were kind of talking earlier, you get one fuel table, one timing table, maybe a closed loop air fuel table, right? Um, but for the guy who wants to dig deep into a and integral gain and offsets and all that kind of stuff, you don't put that in front of them, but you make it available through a more advanced view or they can build their own tables, right? So essentially you can make the ECU as simple or as complex as you're comfortable with? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Simple for the, the, the beginners who want to kind of ease into it, uh, but the guys who really want to wring the most power out of their car or their truck uh, have the advanced features available. Now, in terms of the user interface, obviously you've been developing the VCM Suite software package for a long time and it's pretty evolved. However, the tables that you display and the parameters that we've got access to are obviously driven by how the ECU itself works. So whether it's a Ford, whether it's GM, what generation of each manufacturer is, have you sort of tried to keep a sort of a, a, a look and feel similarity between Core and VCM Suite? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, like you said, we're also kind of limited by what the, the OE controller is put in there from the factory, right? So, you get the tables you get, you get the locations the tables are at. Uh, with VCM Live, which is our tuning software for core, we kind of tried to make it similar uh, to VCM Suite. So, anybody who's used HP tuners in the past can kind of pick it up and, and roll with it. And it's going to be intuitive. Curve. Learning curve is not great. Uh, I kind of compare it to like an iPhone, right? If you have an iPhone 8, you upgrade an iPhone 15. Yeah, they're different, but you've used one iPhone, you can use the other. Uh, so same kind of way. So the the, the icons, um, the navigation, uh, the things like that are all very similar between Suite and Live, um, but it's different enough and advanced enough that you can create things that are, were not there in a factory ECU. Now, before off camera as well, we were talking a little bit about the, the future of tuning and OE manufacturers have kind of put us on notice that they don't want us tuning their vehicles. This is nothing new. I remember this back in the Australian domestic market, BA Falcon, when they released that vehicle, the ECU was going to be untunable. And six months later, of course, everyone's tuning it. We keep hearing those same sort of comments being made, but it's starting to become maybe more realistic that these modern late model ECUs can't be tuned. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows it's a bit of a struggle, um, you know, with the GM and their new security. You know, the, the C8 was released in, in 2019 and we released it in 2023, right? So four years of R&D to try to make sure that we offer a product that's complete and robust uh, that our customers who are used to our support can get. Um, but you're looking at four years, right? So by the time that comes around and we get to do that, those cars are already almost out of warranty and things like that. So I guess that also you've got to recoup your engineering costs there. So uh, does that just end up getting passed on to the end user that tuning one of those vehicles at the moment is more expensive? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and, you know, there's also, there's some exclusivity there. There's some, some R and D time there, you know, when it takes four years and a handful of engineers to get into something, you know, there's a lot of R and D there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of overhead there. Um, and we're running into that now with, with some of the other manufacturers too. I mean, Ford's the same, uh, Dodge now is the same. Um, so things get more inherently complex with security and, and things like that with these OEMs, which is not, not making it any easier, but HP tuners is always dedicated to, to giving our customer base a, a, a full and a complete, uh, solution to their tuning needs. So if we're to look into our crystal ball down down the in the future, are we expecting that this core standalone will be a solution for very late model vehicles where you can't easily tune the factory engine control module? And I'm assuming there you would need to be adding on top a, a, a huge layer of complexity in terms of CAN bus communication specific to that vehicle to keep all of the other controllers and modules happy? Right. Yeah. And that's kind of the reason we went CAN bus heavy on the core. So uh, the new core has actually three CAN bus networks. So one specifically for HPT net, which is going to be our line of accessories that are coming. And the other is just two completely unrestricted CAN bus networks that you can customize the communications, addresses, speeds, things like that to make it work either with other CAN bus modules or if you're using it um, to help piggyback on a, a, an, an unsupported ECU to maybe do additional port injection or anything like that. Um, you can use all that and you can do it all through CAN and you can all set it up any way you need to. 
Okay, so this will be completely end user configurable. I mean, a lot of aftermarket standalones will have CAN bus, but it's sort of locked down to, from a drop down menu, select the component or a product that you want to talk to, which is great. It simplifies it, but for those who are capable of programming their own messaging, mm -hmm you're limited. So you, it's sounding like this is more towards the complete customizability. Yeah, it's 100% user configurable. So we don't, uh, as of right now, we don't offer you any kind of uh, predefined CAN communication mapping or anything like that. It's 100% it's speed, uh, network, location, all that stuff is up to the user. Okay, uh, you just mentioned HP Tuner's accessories and a, a specific CAN bus for those. Can you give us a little uh, insight into what these accessories might be? Sure, something like uh, like currently we have our, our unlock kit for the L5P, right? Um, it uses the M8 screw-in connector that goes into the front of the MPVI-3 and you can do all that through our software. So as we grow and develop and, and kind of do, um, diversify our product offerings to help our customers. Um, things that will will either go directly into the HPTNet standalone, uh, the core, or uh, into the MPVI-3 are, are coming. So I can't get too deep into what's coming, but there's a handful of accessories that are coming that I think everybody will be able to take, take good advantage of. So watch this space, essentially. At the moment, we're maybe a month and a half, I think you said, into after post-release of the core. So it's a very fresh product. And at the moment, what uh, what platforms is that supporting? Uh, right now, it's, it's Gen 3 and Gen 4 LS. Um, we have a couple of uh, terminate, pre-terminated harnesses that you can buy and, and they're all plug and play. Um, but we'll, we'll move into other, uh, other platforms as well. I know uh, Gen 3 Hemi and Coyote are on, are on the docket and things like that. And then I, I eventually we'll get into doing your own cam, uh, cam and crank uh, triggers and things like so that. So it'd make it, basically you could then fit it to any engine. Any you want. Yeah, we want to be able to grow. Um, you know, Gen 3, Gen 4, if, if we, that's something that's, there's a heavy market. Uh, Gen 3 and Gen 4 LS was kind of our, uh, our as we got into the market, early HP tuners, that was all we did was Gen 3, Gen 4 LS. Um, so we want to take care of those folks first, um, and then, but we want a, a solution for everybody. So Gen 3, Gen 4, older generation engines now port injected, uh, will the core standalone also support later model DI in time? Yeah, I think that's on the engineering path. Um, you know, we have to go through and figure out if we want to make our own DI box or if we want to make it available to work with other DI boxes on the market and, and kind of where we want to spend that, uh, uh, spend that, that R and D and that engineering time. So that's something we'll talk about. I know we'll get into some engineering pathway meetings and stuff after, after the first of the year, but yeah. If people want to sort of get a sense of what the software is like, I mean, one of the nice features with HP Tuners for me is you're always able to download VCM suite and kind of look through it and you know, get a sense of how it works for free. Yep. Uh, does the same go for core? Yeah, so uh, the VCM Live software for the core is available on our downloads page right now. You can download it. Uh, and the way we package it is that it comes with 12 base maps for you to, to mess with. Well, you can pick your transmission, uh, pick your generation, pick your throttle body configuration, you pick one of those 12s. And it also, you can so you can see all that uh, basic mode, beginner mode, advanced mode is all available for you to look at. And it also comes with sample data logs too. So you can see how that information is put together. You can figure out how to configure your data log page. So you can, you know, whether it's bars or graphs or maps or any of that, however you want to do it. Um, but you can do all that before you buy it. It's right downloadable right now on a website. And I guess the other important question that will be on people's mind, what sort of price point are we looking at? Yeah, so the ECU uh, itself is $19.99 for retail. Uh, the terminated harnesses are, are $9.49. Um, so you can get a standalone right out of the box that does boost control, traction control, nitrous control, all that kind of stuff with a harness for under three grand. And that's, that's pretty competitive, I'd say. If people uh, watching want to find out more, how they best to see some more information on these? Yeah, so uh, our social media is a big one. So Facebook, Instagram, and then our website really has all the information you could ever ask for. So hptuners.com forward slash core dash ECU is the ECU link, uh, or just hptuners.com if you want to get there. And then you can click our downloads page at the beginning of the top screen. Perfect. Thanks for your time, Justin. Great to sort of learn a little bit more about that product. It's certainly going to be a game changer, I think, for a lot in that GM market. And obviously, later other models. We'll look forward to getting our hands on one ourselves. Thanks for your time. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.